Hello. You watch me right now, talking to you, as if I'm visually looking at your eyes. Get got to your office or your place to talk to you. But the fact that I'm not talking to you directly, I'm talking indirectly. I'm using computer on your PC. And you also use your PC to watch me on YouTube, for example. The modern world is technologically driven and we are right now making use of this advancement in a good or not good manner. But in fact, when you listen to me right now, delivering my project to you uh, makes uh, the whole uh, project much uh, funnier that you listen to someone who's talking to you far away from you. If we want to ask ourselves about, do we really uh, think, uh, or, or do, do all of us think technology benefit us in the ultimate way? That you, right now Google, you can Google anything and to get to millions or just maybe hundred thousands of results of Google search. This is in fact great. But what, to what, uh, exactly, to which extent is it great? Is it great that we all know right now just reducing our work hours to use the technology to make us uh, more lazy or something? This is not really the question that I'm asking here. I'm asking about, that, that, did really technology help us to be more superior or not superior? Does technology help us to become more powerful against maybe other species, for example, that we are humans and we are supplied with brains who can create algorithms into the devices and finally getting a mobile phone, something like this. So, if we just trace out the history back and see the working hours of hunter-gatherers, for example, we find that they work less than the, what we, the time we work right now. Because they just were concerned about getting some food, getting some uh, meat from different uh, places, climbing into the trees to get fruits to eat, the uh, ancient people, 100,000 years ago. But if you say that we are now better, so I think you might be a bit mistaken about it because the problem that maybe a lot of people don't even consider that uh, technology may make us uh, more vulnerable uh, to uh, extent. Why I say that? Because the power of the world is not in the Middle East, is not in the oil, is not in the the, the good place to be, like the Middle East, as I mentioned, but it's actually the Silicon Valley. The more uh, immortal uh, places like Silicon Valley so are thinking about solving the problems of death, the problems of uh, how to reduce as much as possible the effort of human being. This is great, and it seems to be great, but. The other aspect of, of this part is that maybe that these algorithms, that, which are the most important assets, the data, the algorithms, are the assets. It's not the oil, as I said. It's not the money. It's the data. It is the assets of uh, this century, of this technological century. So. In other words, if I say that technology helps us become more powerful, it seems to be not. Because right now, uh, machines, artificial intelligent machines, artificially intelligent machines are much more intelligent than us. Although some people say that uh, we are the individuals or couples of individuals in Intel or even in, in Microsoft, they design the uh, the machine, so they are more intelligent, more intellectual. 
but the fact that the machine itself is going to be much more intelligent. We just focused on raising the intelligence ratio or the intelligence uh, uh, part of the machine, but we didn't really, or we haven't really worked on raising the consciousness of the machine. So maybe machine comes to you saying, I'm much more powerful, and I have to destroy you. And this is exactly what happened. Uh, maybe 40,000 years ago, when some species of the human get, got into the places of the others and they swept with them. They replaced their places because they are much more powerful. And this is what the nature of any concurring activity happens. So maybe I'm sitting right now, a machine or a, a robot comes to me saying I'm much more powerful and I have to kill you. Something like this. You can imagine. Unfortunately, uh, and as I mentioned, that we didn't work on raising the consciousness. Machines are not conscious, but we are conscious. But they are much more intelligent than us. We have some emotions, but they don't have emotions. So maybe authority itself is going to be with uh, or in the hand uh, or the in the hands of the robots. Uh, it seems to be more magical, but it may look like real. So in summary, what I try to uh, allude is that technology is not helping us to be much more powerful. It helps us to be much weaker. We are right now weaker than the machines. You plot your, wave, uh, your, your functions into the computer, and the computer can work even faster, much more efficient than what you work getting you fascinating mathematical shapes, for example. You don't need right now to do a lot of calculations. So you can imagine that you actually invented and you worked on these algorithms to translate uh, into the machine. And the machine is much more powerful than you. And it can work against you. And this is the uh, other side of technology that we, has, uh, we have to be careful about. Uh, maybe I don't say that we have to stop uh, advancing our science and technology uh, of it, but I don't say even that people like uh, uh, people who are working on developing some new tools like uh, bioengineering tools for understanding more and more about the human brain and the human uh, nature to try to solve problems like uh, diseases or something, they won't stop. But the other side of it, that this is exactly what I mentioned, that we are we are coming, we're becoming much weaker, and maybe we are replaced. And another part of it that uh, that seems to be interesting and seems to be dangerous at the same time, we should pan we should panic about it. That, and I recall a, a quote by Talis saying that uh, we don't understand ourselves. Another quote, another quote. I don't remember the. Uh, philosopher or the author of this quote exactly, but he, he said that do not be afraid of understanding that the real you is not the current you. So we don't understand ourselves eventually. But you can imagine that, that Microsoft, Google, Facebook and Twitter can understand you better than what you understand yourself. All your data that, that you share with them and you don't know even the details of these data together, fitting them together to understand this character of me, of you, or anybody. Uh, social networks can, can understand that. So the, the lesson of that, that we share our data to people, and to organizations, but accountable organizations, that they can understand me and you better than we understand ourselves. And maybe they can control you. Maybe the machine itself is going to control you. And this, again, makes or may make us weaker. Maybe, and hopefully not will happen, that the same replacement theory that was applied uh, thousands year, 100,000 years ago will occur again. Thank you for uh, your patience, and I hope that this lesson or couples of lessons were delivered eventually and uh, as much as you.
or as, as high as you expect from me. Thank you.